Hey YouTube, uh, James Patton asked in the comments, can you show me how to do the sound effects thing? Also, can you teach us how to add some background music? And I uh, clarify just for like, if it's for a live stream or a local podcast recording, he said maybe both. So what I'm going to show you is something that is uh, possible to do with, uh, definitely with live streaming. So Ecamm Live, that's what the video that he commented on. So I'm going to use Ecamm Live uh, just to demo that. And uh, just a note that uh, as of version three, uh, now they're up to version 3.1.1, but as of version 3, this changed a lot in Ecamm Live, I think, in terms of their ability to handle, uh, say, desktop audio. Before version 3, what I would have used is is uh, Loopback, so Rogue Amoeba's app for adding audio devices that allow you to route audio from one place to another on your Mac, and I would have created an Ecamm Live audio device in, Ecamm, in Loopback, and then added... Frago, which is the app I use for playing sounds and music and things like that uh, inside a podcast as well as inside of Ecamm Live. And then that device, the Ecamm Live device, is what I would have chosen along with, sorry, I would have also added my microphone, as you can see, the Scarlett 18 i8 USB device. That would have been added as part of this Ecamm Live uh, device, audio device. And so then within Ecamm Live, for example, I would have chosen Ecamm Live, strangely enough. <laughs> Um, as the audio input device, because otherwise I couldn't have got my desktop audio, the, the sounds coming from my computer uh, that my computer itself was making, along with my voice, into Ecamm Live for a live stream, uh, unless, except for when it was on uh, like a desktop screen. So if I was switching, I'm not actually live streaming right now, as you can tell, but because um, I haven't gone live, but just to show this for demo purposes. Um, so when I switch to like a desktop scene, then the system audio option pops up. And so then I can choose to mute or play back system audio. So anything that my computer sounds that my computer is making would come through the live stream. But then when I switch back to just me, that device goes away. So that's why I would have switched to Ecamm Live. I'm not going to do it right now because I might mess with the screen flow recording here. But uh, I would have switched to Ecamm Live, so, which is a device created in Loopback, Ecamm Live there you can see. So it's not something that comes with Ecamm Live. It's what I made. And that allows me, like I said, to have Farago and then other apps as well, for that matter. So I was demoing Logic Pro, you know, podcast editing, that kind of thing. If I was doing that on a live stream and I wanted to bring the audio in from Logic Pro into Ecamm Live, that's what I would be using. But now as of version three, I believe, uh, I don't correct me if I'm wrong, I, I could be wrong on when it actually was added, but I believe it was version three when they added this inside of uh, Ecamm Live in options, no, under preferences you can choose in the audio tab here, broadcast system audio when you're in screen sharing mode. So that's like what I was saying with the desktop layer. When I switch to the desktop layer, command six, in my case, um, system audio appears and then back it appears. So I can also have this be never. So if I never want to accidental, accidental audio from my desktop to appear on the live stream, I could do that. Or I could have it appear all the time which is what I would be doing now going forward if I wasn't already using loopback and having things set up that way. Um, I would use all the time. And that way, if I play, say, in Farago, is the app I use. Um, I don't know if you guys are hearing that or if I'm just not hearing that. Let's see, where am I going to play that through? Yeah, it should be going through there. If I was paying for the pro version, I could have audio out. I think I need to do that in order to send it to uh, Telestream Audio Capture. So I would have to get Pro, which I think is $8 a month. So I'm on the standard license because I had a, a they gave a promotion to people who were on, uh, who had bought Ecamm Live previously. And so that's, I believe that's normally $4 a month, I think. And the only reason I would need that in my scenario right now is if I wanted to be able to record my screen like I am for you guys on YouTube, you folks on YouTube, and so you could hear the audio. Um, you just have to take my word for it that it is is actually playing back. Um, and I, if I was streaming live, that would be apparent because I could show you the, the video on YouTube or Periscope or wherever I would be streaming. So for now, I'm going to change where Ecamm, or sorry, where uh, Farago is sending audio through, so I could choose in Farago, uh, Telestream Audio Cap, and I believe now you guys should be hearing it. I'm not. That's the fun of trying to do this all while you're recording a screencast of it, <laughs> so it doesn't exactly work the way it would if it was live, um, and I wasn't trying to also record. But just to show you, I'm going to quit Ecamm Live, so that's how you would get now audio through there, like I said, in the preferences. Uh, where is it here? 
system preferences audio choose to broadcast system audio all the time and you'll be off to the races with that so I guess on my channel, I've never done a Farago uh, review or, or explainer video. So in brief, I guess, Farago is another app from uh, Rogue Amoeba. And I've talked a lot about various Rogue Amoeba apps, Audio Hijack, um, Loopback, like I said, many others, and SoundSource and things like that. And so Farago is basically is just their soundboard app for the Mac. And it works really well. It's really nicely designed. It looks good it's easy to use um, and so i've got a few different uh, scenes i guess sets they call them in farago and the sample set is what comes with it so it's easiest to use in terms of not getting licensing uh slapped on me <laughs> by somebody but um i can just trigger and queue up all sorts of audio so answered a question about using audio for a podcast whether it was a recording or a live stream or whatever you might be using it for a tabletop gaming experience maybe with friends that you're wanting to have some sound effects i i put together a, a set of sounds just that i was messing with uh, from my favorite which site they were from but um music that you want to use maybe as background for a video or for a podcast or a live stream or whatever you want, might want to do and also you can see I've got some sound effects for like a YouTube podcast that we do. So I've got the intro music. And I'm just going to make sure this is actually, yeah, it's going through Telestream audio. The, the hardest part and the, the weirdest part to configure all this is if, depending on how you're recording, you can use, you need to make sure it's going to the right place, obviously, for where you can hear it. So if you're doing this over Skype, that's where something like Loopback helps because I can set up a, in Loopback, I can have uh, maybe whether it's Zoom input, let's say, for example, is like Skype, it's a competitor for doing video, audio, teleconferencing over your computer, over the internet. And so I can have um, in Zoom, this Zoom input as the input device. So my microphone in Scarlett, uh, 18i8, I8 USB, USB device is there, Farago is there. And so then if I'm playing something in Farago, you can see it's coming through here, going into the output channels in the Zoom input. So then if I'm talking on the phone with somebody on Zoom or Skype, uh, they would also hear what I'm hearing. And so that way they can hear that. So just for an example here, you can use, uh, say something like Audio Hijack to choose to include it. So I've got Farago included. Right now the block is off for some reason, but I could be recording my microphone in Audio Hijack. Farago is being recorded. And then also let's say Zoom, a Zoom call or Skype call, whichever, um, are all being recorded on separate tracks within Audio Hijack. And then obviously I can then take those audio files into Logic Pro or a different audio editor that you might use. And then that allows you to use it while you're, use Farago and the sound effects and things while you're on a Skype call or Zoom call recording a podcast, but then have them on their own, have the sound effects on its own track from separate from your voice, separate from your guest's voice. Let's say if you're using the, the Zoom recording as of their end, um, or else maybe they're sending you the audio files separately. That way, if you know your guests are making noises while the music is playing, or maybe their headphones are too loud and you don't want the audio bleeding back in, you can kill their audio when they're not talking in your uh, audio editor, put together your podcast. So then in this, for example, um, we've got all these sorts of weird sound effects from U2. That's a real Zoo TV moment. Listen, man, I don't need a lemon and I'm with the band. It's really rude. I generally don't go around sniffing rock stars. Drop of megalomania, touch of generosity, a dash of self-promotion. Or just, you know, some silly sound effects. Some intro music. Hopefully that doesn't get me slapped by YouTube. Um, I guess I should edit those out, maybe. <laughs> so you don't want to be, you want to be careful about the sounds you're using because YouTube's algorithm will quickly grab anything that you're using that might have any sort of sound effect uh, legal claim i guess copyright and mark your whole video as unplayable or unusable or unmonetizable depending on what you're doing on youtube so that is how i use um farago and uh ecamm live let's say to interface and do a live stream but also record with Audio Hijack and put together a podcast that I'm not live streaming and just putting audio together for a show. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, and if I didn't clarify it or cover it exactly like you wanted to or were hoping, feel free to throw a comment in down below and I'll endeavor to do that in a future video. I will get to doing a full-on loopback demo at some point here. I know it's a, often a most one of the most requested sort of tutorial audio videos that uh, folks want to see how to use. And uh, it's one of the harder ones to kind of explain and 
So I just want to make sure I do it right when I decide to do it. So feel free to give a thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual YouTube things that you do. And uh, if you've noticed, I put together, um, I've been putting together a podcast for my business and putting a video version of the audio podcast just as a little experiment. So Sorry if that annoys you on the YouTube. You can let me know in comments below, but I uh, just wanted to try out sort of the, for folks who subscribe to my YouTube channel, but would never maybe have never listened to it, anything audio wise that I do, put that on there as a separate sh- uh, feed, a p- separate playlist on my channel. Um, if it's really annoying to people, I'll stop doing that, I guess, and just tell you where you can subscribe in the links below uh, if you want to hear the audio version of that. It's kind of just a behind the scenes look at doing a podcast editing YouTube channel video production business that uh, I run. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and commenting. See you in the next one. Bye.